Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this mini class. This mini class is going to focus on how I, as a grammar auditor, a document contract court authority, and a grammar tutor, create my own correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar finite means, or as it would be referred to in the fiction, definitions. I'm going to take you through step by step exactly how I do it. And then you can perhaps apply that to your own construct. Before I begin, I would like to address a couple things that have been going on on my channel, things that have been being discussed in the comments field or in the periphery of, of my construct. And that is the material and content that I produce having to do with me auditing other individuals grammar. Now anyone's grammar who I audit or seem to be concentrating on, the reason why I'm doing it, part of the reason is because they have come out in the public in some sort of public venue or platform and have slandered me. They have told outright lies about me. And I've gone into these videos and shown how these things are lies. I've provided a continue to the evidence, which these people uh, who propagated these lies have not shown any proof of anything. Just one small example uh, on one web page, it was said that I had a fraudulent C pass. This, ladies and gentlemen, is completely correct. It is a correct C pass C treaty. It has my uh, C pass C treaty number, live life claim number, fate rip volition claim number. It has my drogue timelines on it. And all the information, basic information you need if you want to contract with me using correct sentence structure. This is federal documentation for the closure on my correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar contracts. I have used this for the past few years with no problems whatsoever successfully moving through different venues. If it were fraudulent, I wouldn't be able to do that. For example, I have been towing things like this as a salvage. Or things like this. So, there is no continuance of the evidence for those individuals, not only for that claim about a fraudulent CPAS, but any other claim. Like the one claim, for example, that I am someone named Cloths Winther. Okay. Where, where's the... Where's the uh, proof of that I guess because we've never been seen in the same room together probably because that guy lives over in Denmark and I live here in uh, past tense United States but I digress that's just something I wanted to bring up uh, in this video because it has direct correlation to what I'm about to discuss which is creating facts your own finite means in your own dictionary all right, these are facts that can be certified. When you make a claim, you have to be able to certify it. You have to be able to give closure. Otherwise, you're just assuming and presuming these things, like these other individuals do on their websites. And it also has to do with the fact that some people were questioning, well, Jason, why are you putting out these videos, you know, uh, concentrating on what's incorrect? Shouldn't you be concentrating on what is correct? Well, then I would have to remind the viewer that there are over 400 videos on this channel which concentrate on correctness. 99.9% .9 of the videos on this channel concentrate on correctness. So there's no way that anyone could reasonably say that, that I concentrate on like negative things or incorrect things. But as I once said to someone, I can tell you that there are landmines in the field you're about to walk through. But wouldn't you also like to know what the landmines look like specifically from different angles so that you can identify them as you're walking through the minefield? 
that's what I'm doing when I do these reaction videos, bringing up points of what is not correct, what to look out for, so that if you choose to think for yourself, if you choose to be your own authority, if you choose autonomy, now you can spot these things for yourself. I've hopefully given you some tools to avoid being tricked or trapped by the fiction which these entities are. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on to the mini class. And the word I've chosen to give closure to is psychology. So the way we start would be we would just look it up. Well, let me put it this to, to you this way. One way to start would be to just look it up in an etymology dictionary right off the bat. Or if you want to start, you can just look at Google. So I just looked up on Google uh, the definition of psychology. And we can see here that it has four syllables. The scientific study of the human mind and its functions, especially those affecting behavior in a given context. Another one is the mental characteristics or attitude of a person or group. The mental and emotional factors governing a situation or activity. What is the best definition for psychology? Scientific study of the mind and behavior. Okay. Well, that's given us enough background info. Now let's get into the parse of the word. So the study of the soul comes from the 1650s, modern Latin, 16th century, yes. Latinized form of Greek, psyche, which means breath, spirit, soul. See psyche, plus logia, which is study of, L-O-G-Y. The meaning science or study of the phenomenon of the mind is attested to 1748, which came later. Okay, so we're going to work with those two things right off the bat. Psyche animating spirit, the human spirit or mind, the soul, mind, spirit, life to blow, breathe, ghost, spirit of the dead sometimes traced to a pyru B-H-E-S, to blow, to breathe. Now these are, when you come to things like this, it could be completely up to you how you navigate this for your own finite mean. There's no cut and dried here. Whatever resonates with you. Like see down here, linked words would be spirit. which again comes from this, which means to blow, similar to breathe, right? So we can say psyche basically means the soul, mind, spirit, or breath. Spirit, would that be fair to say? Would, is, is that what you're picking up on this? as we go through these etymological data dumps here. So we have, we've broken it down to psyche, spirit, uh, breath, soul, and then ology is the study of. If you want to duddy, uh, double check that right here, study of. Well, G. Study of and also to speak, tell, and then also to collect and gather. But as we saw in the Google definition, there were four elements to it. So let's investigate that. So let's see, what, what do we have here? Let's go back to Google. Psy Chal O G.
So let's see what we can do with these words. No results. Psyche, animating spirit, the human spirit or mind, soul, spirit, life. Again, we come back to breath, spirit. So we're coming back to those same things that we already touched on. And the next one is what? C-H-O-L. So there's nothing for that, but it gives us coal, which, which is cabbage. But when you go back further, it means stem, stock. Proto-Indo-European, stem of a plant, a stock, stem, stock, pole, bone. How about O? What is O? Of course, it's the 15th letter of the alphabet. Literally, I. Very peculiar and to us unpronounceable guttural. Oh, I was just talking about pronunciation there. The connective O is the usual connecting vowel in compounds taken or formed from Greek, where it's often the vowel in the stem. It is a fixed not only to terms of Greek origin, but also to those derived from Latin. Compounds of which form with the L connecting reduced thematic vowel, especially when compounds are wanted with a sense of the Latin composition, authorized by the principles of Greek composition. So I find it interesting that it means I here, literally I from Phoenicians. I'll take it. And then G-Y is the final piece. How did that come up? Hobbit. <laughs> wow. Gyre, a circular motion to bend, curve. Hmm. Circular course round ring. Hip ankle bone. There's a connection there because we have bone in the C H O L, and we have bone related to this as well. Bend curve to turn something. So we started off with the word psychology scientific study of the soul, the spirit, psyche is spirit, breath, soul, L-O-G-Y is the study of collecting, gathering. And then we broke it down further with the four elements, P-S-Y, spirit, breath, it's like here, C-H-O-L, stem, pole, bone, that's sort of a more tenuous one, but again, you just want to be thorough about it. You know, well, I want to be thorough about it. I want to make sure I do everything, cross all the, the T's and dot all the I's. Speaking of I's, we have O, which in Phoenician literally means I. And then GY is a bend curve or a circular, I think it said also. Sorry, circular. So are you getting a sense of what, where I'm going with this? 
So now I take all this information that I just collected, and now I have to craft a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, closure, finite meaning for the word psychology. And the reason why I use the term finite hyphen mean is because the mean, the meaning of the word must be finite. There must be a limit to it. There is closure to it. That is what correct sentence structure is about. It's about giving closure. When you go into a dictionary in the fiction, what do you have? You have definitions. D-E means no. Finite. I-O-N means contract. So it means no finite contract. There's no closure. That's why you get multiple, multiple meanings for one word. No closure. That's what the fiction does. The fiction doesn't give you closure. The fiction navigates on assumption, presumption, word games. Correct sentence structure is about closure. Boom. Period. So here's what we're going to do. This is where I begin the process. So the first thing I'm thinking of, what's the main point of this? Psychology, the finite mean, is with the what? What is possessing the finite mean? Like the main point. I guess it would be the studying, collecting, and gathering, wouldn't it? So you could say... So it's with the study and with the collection of what? What are we collecting? So this is what I put for the psychology of the finite mean is with the study and with the collection of the data with the matters of the spirit and of the mind with the cognition by this claim. So I went into the dictionary and I pulled out psyche. And the closure for psyche is with the claim of the performance contract with the mind and spirit by the contract parties. So it's very close to psychology, but psychology adds something to it. Psychology is now the study of it, the study and the collection of data with the matters of the spirit and of the mind, with the cognition by the claim, meaning that the claim of the cognition is with the mind and with the spirit of the matters, with the data 
of the collection and of the study with the finite mean by the psychology. So it's mathematically certified forwards and backwards. The claim is a cognition of these matters, the psychology. So you're claiming cognition. You understand the data and the matters of the spirit and the mind. Well, what is a spirit? Glad you asked. So I've pulled up both spirit and mind, so we know what we're talking about. So spirit is with the claim of this performance contract, with the breath of the life, with the life force by this claim. And then mind is with the claim of this authority, with the creation and with the stewardship of the cogitation patterns, meaning the thought patterns, with the volition and with the performance of the vessel's navigation, with the certification by the claim and by the performance. Now, you see here, I have given closure to these facts, which are contained within the finite mean of psychology. You would have to give closure to every fact in here. Matters, finite mean, study, collection, data, claim, cognition. All these words would be given correct sentence structure finite means just like this. Not only those, but also the positionals and lodials and the conjunctions and the verb. All right, that's what correct sentence structure is about. It's about closure, which is what I've just given you on how I create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite meme. I just put the work in. I collect data. I gather it together. And then I transship it out as a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim. And that's exactly what this is. Thank you for joining me for this correct sentence structure mini class. The knowledge I've just shared with you in this video can be applied to any term that you wish to give closure to. And follow these steps. You can use other websites. Uh, you can actually go all the way back and, and look for closure on each individual letter if you want to get that detailed about it. It's completely up to you. And of course, it's contingent upon what you have going on, like what your reason is for doing this as to how far you need to go with your closure. Because the, the bottom line is when you go out there into a real, real situation and you're under duress, and you have to have closure on your grammar when you're out there actually navigating through the sea of space, whether you have your live life claim or you see pass or both or whatever it is you're doing, and you have to give closure to your correct sentence structure contracts, and you have to know what every fact means, and you have to explain and give closure to those things, or perhaps create them on the spot or syntax on the spot, you have to be confident with it. You have to know what it is you're talking about. Walking into a situation under duress and saying, well, full colon, so hyphen, so colon, so said this. I don't think it's going to turn out uh, the way you think it will. That's why it's very important to have your own closure your own autonomy, take authority over your own documents, and authority just means you've authorized them. You are the author of your contracts, or you've co-authored them, you've authorized them, you've autographed. Once you take accountability of those things, and you have this type of closure, you've gone through the blood, sweat, and tears, and invested the time and energy and the hours in creating these finite means, doing this research, Doing, or finding the earliest nativity root meanings of the words and crafting your own correct sentence structure dictionary, then you will have that confidence to go out there and handle these situations under duress with ease and with calmness, with a very slow and measured cadence, peaceful, neutral, balance of honor and grace, rule one, rule equal maintenance. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. It really is that simple. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, and syntax grammar, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, or you can study the over 400 videos on my YouTube channel, uh, which is my gift to you, my fellow mankind. 
And you can also uh, join two tiers of membership on this channel. Uh, and the second tier especially is for those of you that want exclusive weekly content not available to the public. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.